Thank you guys uh, for making time today. I guess we'll start with you, uh, Tom, being that you're the star of the show. Um, Billy the Kid, the, the way he's portrayed in this series, he's very much more of a negotiator. The gun situation is always something that he looks at as a last resort. That's a stark contrast from what we've seen in previous depictions of him and you know things like Young Guns and shows like that. How was it playing this character that has a little bit more moral nuance to him than what we've seen before? Um, first off, thanks for making time today. Hi. <laughs> uh, I, um, <laughs> I think there's a real benefit in this being like an eight part series rather than a movie. First of all, like a practical benefit, which is we get to dig into what he was like as a kid, as a boy, before any of the trauma made him into this killer. And I think what is unique about this show um, that I think people are really going to resonate with is, is getting to see a young man slowly get turned into something he never intended to become. Um, I don't think any person is born bad. I don't think that's, you know, I think people, people have trauma that they experience and they, they grow hardened and they grow a shell and they have to, um, you know, that they're traumatized by certain things. And, and then that trauma hits different people differently. And, uh, and he, lived at a time when it was, it was a violent world that he was born into and lived in. Um, and, and he realized at a certain point that violence was, was how he had to meet the violence that he, he was faced with. Um, and so I think for me, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing to watch this person try and fight the system that he's faced with, you know? Um, and the corruption, there's a widespread corruption. And, and he, sees it from a young age and tries to fight against it. And eventually it, it kind of, it changes him as a human. Right. right. <clears throat> and then on the flip side, Dan, you look at your character. You, he seems Jesse as someone who's accepted the world as it is, and he's going to navigate through it the best he can, but he's not looking to change the world. How do you view his friendship with Billy based on that? Because you can argue that it's a very strong friendship, but you can also argue maybe it's a toxic friendship as the season goes along. How did you view it as an actor taking on that role? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I think it's an evolution. I think it starts as, I, I, I don't think Jesse even knows how profound that relationship is to him at the mm -hmm. start. Um, and, and it's, and he's, he's drawn to Billy. He, I think he has ideas of like Billy's ability um, and, and suitedness to a certain lifestyle and to running with, with Jesse. But I think he's actually drawn in a, a much more profound way to him. Um, there is absolutely love there, um, brother, brother love, but in the kind that he has never, ever experienced and maybe will never experience again. Um, so I think it's, it is an evolution. It's something that just starts. Yeah. It, it, it meets challenges, meets lots of challenges. And I think when it doesn't go the way that Jesse, it seems so self-evident the way forward for Jesse, he seems so clear about how we can function in, in this world and get ahead how we can like move into a, a new strata of class. Um, if only we do this, if, if we keep working this direction. Um, and like, like you said, so, you know, so clearly is like, he is, he's accepted that the world is a corrupt society. Like that this, that there's corruption here. It's been here since day dot and there is no way we can change that. Um, and, and, and that, that is where I think, I think this is the biggest wedge between the two of them is this sort of morality question. Um, where, where Jesse kind of, I think, eventually sort of sells his soul in order to, you know, strive forward. Um, and, and Billy isn't willing, ultimately, um, isn't willing to do the same, you know, make the same sacrifice. And I think that is the, that is the main thing. There's a lot of other little, you know, there's racial things that get in among, under, the stick, under the skin, but I think that's the wedge that ultimately pushes them apart i mean there's this this saying of like you don't choose sides you choose opportunities and i think that's jesse 110 percent. and and i think i don't think billy is that at all i think they're both they just they they value very different things yeah and eileen i feel your character kathleen how you doing is the kind of the heart and soul of the show kind of the moral compass and she infuses billy with his morals early on when I looked at where she existed, we're talking about 18th century America, 
I feel like there's even parallels to what women go through today, even though we're over, you know, 200 years later, it's like more things change and more they say the same. Did you feel some of that going through the role and seeing some of the challenges that your character faced? Uh, similar challenges to today? I, yes. I, I think so. I think I was, I think I find the part so refreshing in that where I was, you know, lucky enough to play this really strong woman but this really strong woman was strong, not because she was having to don any masculine attributes, that we were seeing the strength of women or the qualities that, you know, are associated maybe with femininity. And it was really refreshing to see those kind of seen in a strength position. Um, like everything from like the maternal instincts to like even like her intelligence, her compassion, how she views people, um, all of those things. And also the idea of setting yourself a moral compass and, you know, setting yourself boundaries, those kind of things involve a degree of strength. Like in relation to, you know, Kathleen is an immigrant. She's an immigrant searching for a better life for her family and a new start in this, you know, this promise that we've always heard of, of like maybe like the American dream. But I, th I think that is still directly relatable today. You know, I come from a very small place in Ireland <laughs> and I moved away to work and to kind of follow, you know, my Peter Pan complex and <laughs> the one to like pretend to be other people. But all of those, <laughs> all of those things wouldn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like when I was younger would have been possible in my tiny town in Ireland that I started. So... Uh, the moving on to like, a ch you know, t to try and get a better life, I think is very much prevalent. I think how, I think how women navigate in a system that's not really stacked for them, it, it's a different thing. I think that is still a thing today. I think it's getting a lot better, but I think it is still a thing today. Um, not directly relating to me, but I think the story of immigration is just so prevalent and so prevalent right now so I think that's also relatable which is why this story you know it, it really hits and it, you have so much compassion towards these people because it's not it's so relatable that it's not a million miles away from any of our experiences of the world today. Very true very true um, one other thing that stood out to me that I really didn't think initially would hit is the whole idea of celebrity culture and celebrity worship that that was even existing back in the old West, the way Billy was celebrated. And you can tell he's uncomfortable with that. You know, his reputation kind of precedes him before he even walks in the room. I feel like if he were around now, you know, he might already have, you know, Netflix specials and all that and already have <laughs> like a, a following of people that would, you know, even though you know, he's the outlaw, that people would just love him. <laughs> How do you feel he's been dealing with that? You know, the celebrity, I feel like you know, he has one particular scene where he fights against that, where he kind of lets everybody know, like, look, don't push too far when they ask him to kind of show his skills. But how do you yeah. feel he's been dealing with that over the course of the season, you know, being basically a, a celebrity? Being a Netflix celebrity. Uh, uh, <laughs> first of all, I, I love that you picked up on that. Thank you. Um, yeah. By the way, I want to see, I want to see a Billy the Kid special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> him and Oprah just like sat in her garden having a chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, that'd be pretty cool. Um, be cool. I, I think uh, that is such a good question, man. I love that. Thank you. Um, that's uh, first of all, I think I think he would hate it if he were around today. Um, I, I think he is. I think he's wise beyond his years. I think he sees the toxicity in it. I think he sees that. Uh, that when you put someone on a pedestal and you you worship them for this kind of perceived greatness, it's never the full truth. It's never the full truth of who they are. And I think that's something that we deal with today that we, we kind of forget is that we see everything through this filter of celebrity or this filter of um, of worship of, of some sort of like figurehead. And nowadays there's a lot of them. Um, and I think what he sees is that when you do that, you forget all the complexity of a person. You, you forget that they... They also go to bed feeling anxious. They also like, you know, that whatever it is that they're famous for, or they're, they're worshipped for, um, it's just probably a small part of who they are as a human. And it's, it's almost a dehumanizing thing. And all he really wants is for someone to, to turn to him and say, hey, I know you're only doing this because you've because it's life has been really hard to you because um, that's what he knows. He's not doing it because 
because he wants to be famous in the West. He doesn't want to be the fastest gunslinger. And it, it's all to him. It's it's reluctant. He's like a reluctant hero. He um he's someone who, and I think this is why he resonates so deeply with me. He doesn't choose to be be a hero. Um, he he is. Someone asked me recently if they think if I think he's an activist, and I said no because I think an activist has is someone who chooses activism and chooses to to fight for something. Um, and I guess he does eventually, but to begin with, I think he fights for it because he doesn't see any other way out of it. Um, he was he was an incredible ally to to the local Mexicans in Lincoln County um, and the, the native people of Lincoln County in, in New Mexico. Um, and I think that's why some people think of him as an activist of some kind, some sort of like Western activist. But I think for him, it was more that he saw a similarity there to his experience. He, he, saw, he knew what it meant to leave Ireland because of the famine and have no food on the table and his family be subjected to atrocities and then move to New York and have the promise of a better life and, and work and that not be true either. And then the promise of moving West and then getting there and realizing that there were people just like him who were also being subjected to this misery. Um, and, and he saw a kinship there and he decided to fight for the people who nobody was fighting for. And I think that is what is so compassionate about him. So yes, he was this killer and he, he fought um, with a gun, but I think it's because he, it was the only thing he knew how to do. He like fought, fought, he fought uh, corruption and atrocities with his hands. He was willing to get dirty. And I think that is what is so, so kind of compelling about him. And I think that's why when, you know, they all kind of treat him as a celebrity or he sees the newspaper clippings, he finds it, there's a dissonance there. There's a, there's a, a disconnection where he's like, hang on, this is not what it's about. It's about like, look at the big picture. Look at the, the reason I'm fighting. Not, don't look at me. Look at like the actual thing that I'm fighting for. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. That's my son. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to you, Eileen, um, you mentioned a lot about immigration, kind of the great thing about immigration as far as you know being able to uproot and establish yourself someplace else. I think this show also shows kind of the dark side of the immigration process where you start out, you're exploited, you're treated differently, but then eventually when you assimilate, you might end up being the ones that do the oppression, as we see with um, John Murphy and some of the other characters later on, once they get in power, even though they were once immigrants. What do you feel about Kathleen made her never go that route? It feels like she always, no matter what happened, no matter what offers came, she always knew who she was and never kind of succumbed to that kind of dark side of uh, assimilation. I think Kathleen had amazing empathy. And I think her respect for a person, no matter who they were, what I loved, like, it didn't matter if, you know, it was a scene with Hattie and Hattie, you know, like was a close friend and Hattie was in prostitution or the lady that run the boarding house or like, Kathleen was just looking for a good person or a good soul, not a status or any other of those things. So I think her view of the world was more, was really quite beautiful and I think a lot of that came from like where she said what was important and kind of tried to instill those in Billy like education was so important to her I think Kathleen could see that the entire world was corrupt and actually kept introducing that to Billy to make him aware and um, so I think she and I also think her faith like she was you know she had an incredible faith and and sense of self. And I think there's something, um, when you have moved away from home, I think you take an element of like your, your culture or your sense of self with you. And like, we're looking at an Irish woman <laughs> who's emigrated at a time when, you know, she has absolutely no rights or say in anything. You see her trying her best to assert what she knows. She would have be, been amazing at, uh, you know, running a border and house. The man in the bank didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> the woman had so much work ethic. But like this system was totally, totally, um, completely stacked against her. But she didn't give up for that. And I think whenever you are in a position where you're so used to things, having no power, I think what you do have complete power and control over is who you are as a person. So when the entire world is saying <laughs> you have no say in this and we're not going to give you any money and no, there's no jobs, you know, she did everything that actually gleaned a little bit of personal power. Like when you look at yourself in the mirror, 
you decide the person that you are and how you behave and how you treat other people and how you go through life. And that was the most important thing to Kathleen. And really that is part, that is complete part. It's just a, a, one about yourself. I don't know if that made any sense, but I oh, give sure you the So beautiful. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Oh, I love with her. <laughs> and then you will have the you will have the last question. Um, the historical Jesse Evans, there's a lot of mystery with him. You know, when he got out of jail, he disappeared. No one knows what happened to him. And I feel like even indirectly, there's a little bit of mystery in the way you play the character. You never kind of know where his emotions are at completely. You get hints, but you're never really completely sure. Uh, I want to know if that was intentional or did that just kind of organically morph the way you were playing the character? Well, I haven't seen how they've cut it all, so I don't really know. But no, it wasn't. I don't know. Was it intentional? It's kind of intentional. I mean, I think he's somebody who hides it. At, um, I kind of, I think he functions emotionally from a place of denial of emotions. And I always saw him as whenever there was some sort of, I don't know, he couldn't show it, basically. Like, he's he's almost like, he, he's like our grandfather's. There's, he's got that same sort of, you know, there's a certain rigidity to him emotionally he can't he can't express it it's sort of more hedonistic expressions of of emotion and, and fun and you know camaraderie he can do um but to to truly like open up um like he, he couldn't tell somebody how much he cares for them he couldn't yeah so i guess there is a there is a, a hidden element to him i always always sort of saw there was like a he's always weighing situations and people up he's always always saw him as a in history, they talk about him as being quite, um, I mean, he was always cool, calm and collected, blue, blue eyed, cool, calm and collected. That's, that's like probably one of the, the strongest things that comes out of all the different histories. Um, and, and he, he's, he's at the center point of so many pivotal moments throughout the Lincoln County war, throughout Billy's life. Like he is, he put himself at the center of things in some, in some fashion. We don't really know how much he was there um, and how much he was involved, but he's always there and, and sort of hiding in the wings. And so I think that gives you a bit of insight into how he functions. Um, so I guess, yes, there was a bit of subterfuge, subterfuge with, with uh, how, how he expressed himself. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you guys making time. I'm looking forward to the uh, premiere on April 24th and appreciate you guys. Hope you guys will be live tweeting um, when the show comes on. I will be. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Great questions. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a good one. You too. Bye.